Chapter 46 Love can't be calculated based on time. Yu Dong's cold eyes made Xia Feng's heart tighten. With an un's sudden appearance and the awkward atmosphere, Xia Feng suddenly felt like being a little impulsive. Dong Dong, come over. Xia Feng lifted a hand towards her. Yu Dong paused, then slowly walked towards Xia Feng. Let me introduce you. This is. Xia Feng hadn't even finished his sentence when An took the initiative to stretch out a hand towards Yu Dong. Interrupting Xia Feng's introduction, she said, Hello, I'm Anan, Xia Feng's ex girlfriend. Yu Dong smiled as she cut Anan off, taking her outstretched hand for a shake. Anan was surprised at Yu Dong's actions and smiled awkwardly. It seems that Xia Feng mentioned me to you. Of course. Looking back to Xia Feng, Yu Dong continued, I knew about you on the day we met. Anan's face turned stiff at this. Glancing at Xia Feng, she reluctantly said back, Pediatrics still need me for some things, I'll be going first. All right. Xia Feng nodded. Anan swept her gaze towards the two people holding each other's hands. With one last smile, she turned and started to walk away. Just when Yu Dong thought she had won the round, Anan suddenly turned back and looked at Xia Feng saying, right, my colleagues wanted to hold a welcoming party for me. Now that you're back, you should be free so come enjoy the night with us. I, I checked beforehand, you don't have any scheduled surgeries. I'll see you tonight. Anan said before turning a corner, disappearing from their sight. Yu Dong listened to her parting words and lifted an eyebrow as she looked at Xia Feng, waiting for his response. Before Xia Feng could open his mouth, the doors of the operating room opened again. Yu Dong abandoned Xia Feng and rushed to the door with Xiang Xiaoyu, Xinxin, Xinxin. The two each took a side and looked down to their friend. Don't worry, the mother's condition has stabilized and when the anesthetic wears off, she'll wake up. Let us move her to a room first. The doctor explained as he pushed the bed. The crowd thanked the doctor and followed the bed through the ward. Xia Feng saw that Yu Dong was leaving. He rubbed his forehead. He didn't know if he just got lucky or not. At this time, a sneaky figure peeked behind a corner before rushing towards Xia Feng. Did you see? Xia Feng lacked any mercy as he raised a hand to hit the man running towards him. So you knew, why didn't you tell me in advance? Xiao Yifan dodged the hit and quickly explained. I only found out about it two days ago. I wanted to tell you but since you were facing against Yu Dong's parents, I didn't want to burden you. I was going to tell you the moment you came back to the hospital, but I had surgery earlier in the morning. Look at me, I'm still wearing my scrubs. Xia Feng gave him a look. Ah it was useless to stay and chat, he needed to find Yu Dong. Where are you going? Xiao Yifan followed Xia Feng sniffing for gossip. You haven't told me what happened when they met. Did they fight? Man, when I saw I didn't dare come out. Xiao Yifan, you just live for this type of excitement don't you? Xia Feng raged. Yes, I do. Xiao Yifan readily admitted this with a straight face. I'm breaking it off with you. Hey, hey, don't joke. Xiao Yifan quickly stopped Xia Feng and apologized. I wasn't worried about you. You have your new love at one hand and your old love on the other. What new love, old love, Yu Dong is the only one in my heart. Xia Feng frowned. But Inan was someone you've asked to marry you three times, I thought. Xiao Yifan wisely didn't finish his sentence when he saw Xia Feng's expression. I didn't say anything. Don't look at me like that. Never mind, I'm going ahead. Xiao Yifan decided to retreat. Xia Feng was never the type to bask in the limelight, so Xiao Yifan wondered why he even doubted his friend in the first place. When Xia Feng arrived at the gynecology ward, Xiang Xiaoyu and Lu Xiuan were in the middle of a confrontation. You're not allowed to enter. Xiang Xiaoyu was blocking the door. I'm just going to see how she's doing. Lu Xiuan said. You think you can still see her with me here? Lu Xiuan. You're being delusional. Xiang Xiaoyu laughed right at his face. Seeing her domineering attitude, Kin thought about how different she looked compared to her chubby past. But he found her current stance very similar to how she blocked his way to confess when they were children. With this thought, Kin couldn't help but find Xiaoyu extremely cute at this moment. Xia Feng approached the door, also wanting to go in. However, he was also blocked by Xiang Xiaoyu. Xia Feng was stunned and asked, 
Is Dong Dong inside? Yep, I need to talk to her. Tell me, what happened to you and that female doctor just now? Xiang Xiaoyu had been pursued by countless boys since she was a child and could sniff out ambiguous relationships a mile away. With the scum Lu Xuan and the now untrustworthy Xie Feng both in front of her, Xiang Xiaoyu felt that she was seconds away from hitting someone. Or you can just call Dong Dong for me, I won't go in. Xie Feng didn't argue with Xiaoyu, instead thinking of a compromise. Xiang Xiaoyu wanted to disagree, but Qin finally stepped in and dragged her to his side. What are you doing, butting in other people's relationships? You look like an old hen squatting on the doorway. Are the people inside your chicks? Whatever. Xiang Xiaoyu shook off Qin's hand with growl. Meanwhile, Lu Xuan and Xie Feng slipped into the room. Inside, Yu Dong was wiping Ren Xingxin's sweaty face with a cloth. When Yu Dong saw Xie Feng enter, she smiled. This lightened Xie Feng's heart, and he quietly calmed down. Xiaoyu, come in and take care of Xingxin. Yu Dong saw Xiaoyu come in with her fists raised and stopped her. Fine. Xiaoyu glared at Lu Xuan as she passed the two men and firmly planted her butt on the bed. Determined to keep Lu Xuan far away, Qin looked at her aggressive stance and felt a little pity for Lu Xuan. Xie Feng took Yu Dong out into a nearby hospital garden. Holding her hand, he thought about how to explain, but in the end he could only say, Just trust me. Are you saying that I should trust you, or is it that you did something that would lose my trust? Yu Dong asked with a raised eyebrow. No, it's not like that. Xie Feng quickly denied. I didn't know that she had returned to China. By all accounts, she should still be studying in America for another four months. You seem to remember that piece of information quite clearly. Yu Dong drew back her hand from Xie Feng's grip. Her expression blank. I dot it's not. Xie Feng became frustrated. Ah, how do I explain this? PFFT. Yu Dong couldn't help but be amused by the expression on Xie Feng's face. Xie Feng knew that Yu Dong wasn't actually angry, so feeling helpless and somewhat depressed, he lifted a hand to rub her head. Hey, you're going to mess up my hair. Yu Dong dodged the troublesome hand and tidied her hair. It was okay for me to look a little messy before, but now I have a rival nearby. What nonsense are you spouting? Xie Feng knocked Yu Dong on the top of her head. Do you still like her? Yu Dong finally asked Xie Feng this question. Dot in fact, Xie Feng had never thought of this issue deeply. Anan was the first woman he ever fell in love with. After four years of dating, it would be strange if he never felt something for her. But if there was one thing he was absolutely certain of, it's that he will be spending the rest of his life with Yu Dong. Dong Dong, Xie Feng looked at her and seriously said, I like you. But you liked her before. What's more, you've liked her for a long time. Yu Dong said, a little uneasy. You've just started to like me not too long ago. Dong Dong, I can't tell you that Anan is just some ordinary friend in my eyes. Xie Feng continued as he held Yu Dong's hands. But I can assure you that there's absolutely no possibility of us getting back together. Furthermore, a person's feelings can't be calculated based on time. How Yu Dong wished that at this moment, Xie Feng would say that Anan was just some familiar stranger in his eyes or that he'll never see her again, or talk to her again. But if he did, Xie Feng would be lying to her. Women are so contradictory, sometimes they want someone to lie to them, even if they knew it was fake, like that emperor with his clothes, wearing them and going out while pretending that what he was wearing was beautiful. No she's talking about the story emperor's new clothes. The people made him believe that he's wearing new clothes when he's just actually naked. He goes out showing off the clothes to his people but no one dares say anything. Then promise me something. Yu Dong didn't want to lie to herself. Sure. Xie Feng didn't hesitate and immediately nodded. Don't meet with her alone. And tell me if you do actually meet with her, I don't want to hear about it later through someone else. Yu Dong said this, then pursed her mouth, obviously unhappy. Xie Feng looked at her pouting lips and chuckled as he nodded, if I do what you say, Will you still get jealous, yeah? Yu Dong nodded. Then won't you be unhappy if I report this kind of things to you? Xie Feng thought about this with a frown. It's not like you're going to deliberately provoke me right? Why are you asking so many questions? Yu Dong became irritated. Oh. 
Xia Feng was thoroughly amused by Yu Dong, pulling her into his arms, he said, then promise me, no matter what, you have to tell me all your thoughts and feelings when I do, fine, if you have any questions, you have to ask me, don't bottle it all in, un, not just about an un, but about anything that troubles you. Xia Feng continued, because we're going to be together for a long, long time. Dot then don't go to her welcoming party tonight. Yu Dong said after a moment of silence, ha ha. Xia Feng felt that Yu Dong always casts a magic spell on him, whenever he's with her he becomes happy. I didn't plan on going, I'm planning on heading to the laboratory in the evening. I'm staying to take care of Xinxin all afternoon, so we can have dinner together later. Yu Dong said, her head tilted, great. Xia Feng couldn't resist laughing. On the second floor balcony of the inpatient ward, Anan looked past the glass window to the two people standing on the garden, her face pale. See, I didn't lie to you. Xiao Yifan was next to her, feeling like he was literally breaking up with her for Xia Feng. That doesn't mean anything. Anan looked away. Anan, to tell you the truth, I've never understood why you refused Xia Feng's proposal three times and left for the States. Now that Xia Feng's with someone else, why are you still stubbornly refusing to let go of him? Xiao Yifan totally didn't understand Anan's thought process. You can be rest assured, if Xia Feng's heart no longer holds me dear, I won't insist and do anything more. Anan said. Anan, Xiao Yifan continued, I know we've been friends for a long time. Yu Dong really is a good girl. Xia Feng is really happy with her. You, Xia Feng's character is something the both of us understand better than anyone. Anan interrupted. Do you really believe that he'd find a random girl in front of the doors to the Civil Affairs Bureau just to make Auntie feel better? Do you actually believe he'd be that irresponsible? Just for a marriage certificate, even Xiao Yifan had some doubts. Mainly because Xia Feng and Yu Dong were only together for a very short time. When they got married, it was only for Mother Xia. Later, they weren't even together because Xia Feng had to go to America for three months. Even after returning, Xia Feng spent most of his time in the hospital or in the labs. To say their feelings were deep, it might be as Anan said. Why did you come back to China earlier? Xiao Yifan asked Anan. My tutor invited me back to China for an exchange program. Anan answered calmly, and because of Xia Feng, Xiao Yifan couldn't tell how genuine Anan's words were. He felt that he was a little too tangled in their situation. Sigh, women are really too troublesome, I'm not getting involved anymore. Xiao Yifan directly said, all right. Anan smiled, but you're still invited to my welcoming party tonight. At this moment, Xiao Yifan suddenly felt that being a single dog wasn't too bad. At least he didn't need to deal with so many troublesome things. The author has something to say. I see a lot of little angels say that Xia Feng shouldn't even acknowledge Anan, but don't you think that's a little unrealistic compared to the actions an actual person would make? Besides, with Fish Jelly's explosive fighting power, there isn't anything to worry about, ah. Chapter 47 Protecting Only One Person During dinner, Xia Feng didn't go out to Anan's dinner party. Instead, he was at the Western restaurant just outside the hospital with Yu Dong, eating steak. Yu Dong looked at Xia Feng from across the table and couldn't help but laugh. What are you laughing at? After ordering, Xia Feng saw Yu Dong laugh, so he had to ask. I remember the first time I asked you to have dinner with me, it was to this restaurant. Yu Dong answered with a smile, here, Xia Feng carefully thought back, but couldn't remember a time he was here with Yu Dong before tonight, how come I don't remember, because you didn't come at all, Yu Dong's tone became a little disgruntled, I told you to bring some money over, and you sent someone else, oh dot that time, Xia Feng remembered, the dean happened to be looking for me so dot anyway, it was my fault. Xia Feng's face was apologetic. Yu Dong put her chin on her hand and lazily said, Forget it, you didn't like me very much at the time, I was still in the middle of pursuing you. The pair continued to chat for a while before the waiter served their steaks. The two began to cut up their food. When Xia Feng was halfway done, he suddenly raised his head to look at Yu Dong skillfully cutting her own steak. Why are you looking at me like that? Yu Dong saw him staring and asked, stopping her movements. I was just thinking. My wife is really capable. 
Xie Feng answered with a smile. You cut the steak so well I can't take the opportunity to show off. Yu Dong looked down to her steak mostly cut up, then towards Xie Feng's cut up steak. Looking towards Xie Feng's smiling face, she suddenly remembered Xie Feng's words the first time he picked her up from work. It was raining that day. Xie Feng held an umbrella over them, his voice gentle as he looked at her. You don't always have to act so brave. Girls who act a little more spoiled are more attractive. Yu Dong blinked away the memory. Placing her knife and fork down, she smiled and said, I suddenly lost all my strength. It looks like you'll have to help me cut up the rest of my steak. Sure. Xie Feng nodded and took Yu Dong's plate to cut the rest of her steak diligently. Looking at him, Yu Dong suddenly realized something. Feeling a little unhappy, she snorted and asked, did you always help an and like this? Xie Feng looked up at her. He knew that his answer would make Yu Dong uncomfortable, but he still gently nodded. Yu Dong grabbed her glass and held it tightly, like a mantra. She told herself over and over again not to be angry, it wouldn't be good to constantly get mad. She shouldn't hold on to the past, she was a mature and even tempered woman. I'm not happy. It didn't even take a minute for Yu Dong to cave. Xie Feng gently placed her plate back in front of Yu Dong. From now on, I'll only cut for you. I don't believe you. Yu Dong knew that she was acting jealous. She probably sounded small and difficult. Dong Dong, look at me. Xie Feng patiently waited for Yu Dong to look up, and then he said, I don't have a lot of strong points, but if I promise you something, I'm going to try my hardest to keep it. His words seemed to wash away the vinegar in Yu Dong's heart. Eat now, you still need to swap with Xiaoyu later. Compared to Xie Feng's sincerity, Yu Dong felt like she was being unreasonable. Embarrassed, she bowed her head and started to eat. Xie Feng knew that Yu Dong had finally pardoned him, so he smiled and stretched out to wipe Yu Dong's sauce stained mouth with a napkin. Yu Dong's face turned red at his actions. The rest of the dinner was pleasant. Xie Feng walked Yu Dong to the hospital and then drove to the university labs. Xie Feng was usually very focused when doing experiments. He wouldn't notice the time or any movements around him, so he naturally didn't hear the slight sound of the laboratory door being opened. Anan entered the room wearing a brown windbreaker. She quietly stood on the side, her peach blossom eyes gazing at Xie Feng bent down on a microscope. Only when she saw Xie Feng finish his observations did Anan talk. You were always so serious when doing an experiment. Xie Feng jumped at the voice and turned to see Anan. Anan, how did you get it? Anan raised her hand that held a key. Laughing she said, the spare key is still in its usual place. Xie Feng put down the slides in his hand and approached Anan. He raised a hand and took back the key from her. At Xie Feng's actions, Anan's face looked torn. Trying to lighten the mood, she changed the subject. Are you still experimenting on tumors? An. After Xie Feng retrieved the spare key, his head remained bowed as he checked the data. The faster he finished, the faster he could go home. How many experiments has it been? Is your data promising? Anan reached out to take the laboratory logs beside Xie Feng. On Anan's fair and exquisite fingers, a luxurious diamond ring twinkled. The sparkle caught Xie Feng's eye and when he saw the ring, he froze. After taking a deep breath, Xie Feng finished the last of the data, stood up, and turned to Anan, reaching out to her. Anan looked at the familiar hand stretched out towards her then gave him the laboratory logs she had been looking at. Xie Feng took the offered papers, put it back on the desk, but again extended his hand towards Anan. Didn't I just give it back? Anan was puzzled. That wasn't what I was asking for. Xie Feng's eyes turned to Anan's right hand. When Anan realized what Xie Feng was insinuating, she turned pale and clasped her hand. With disbelief all over her face, she asked Xie Feng, You want to take it back? Yes. Xie Feng nodded. But you gave it to me. Anan shook her head. But you no longer have the right to wear it. Xie Feng calmly said. Give it back to me. Did she ask you to do this? Anan questioned. She knew Xie Feng's personality best. It was impossible for him to do this kind of thing. Dong Dong doesn't know about any of this. But dot I don't want her to misunderstand. It was just the two of them here. So Xie Feng felt that he could be more direct and truthful. But originally, Anan wanted to talk about how much he longed for her to accept this ring, 
But, I took the ring back then, I accepted it. Wasn't the meaning obvious enough? Anand suddenly felt resentful. I took the ring, but why did you marry someone else, Anand? Xia Feng didn't want to talk about the past because it would just make it hard for both of them, make them relive past hurts, give it back, it doesn't belong to you anymore, it's mine. Anand covered the ring and looked at Xia Feng, upset. She didn't seem to understand why Xia Feng was doing this to her. Xia Feng looked at Anand and suddenly felt tired. Being further tangled with the other wouldn't be good for either one of them. Xia Feng retracted his hand and looked at Anand with an indifferent expression. Do you still remember how you got that ring in the first place? An Anne's speech blossom eyes were filled with tears. Xia Feng truly felt pity, but his heart long ceased to beat for her. We dated for three years. I went to all the different jewelry stores in Shanghai to find you a ring. I wanted to put it on your finger, but you said you were too busy with work and your studies, so you didn't want to get married. Half a year later, you graduated. I thought that your workload you'd be lighter. So I took the ring and went to find you. You replied that you took part in some scientific research. That you were even busier than before. Xia Feng looked at Anand's diamond ring and quietly said, From then on, that ring lost its original meaning. After listening, Anand couldn't help but cry out, But I really was busy. The third time, you took the ring but left me in front of the Civil Affairs Bureau. You said. You said you needed to go abroad to study. That you would take the ring, and when you finally wanted to get married, you would come back with it. Xia Feng looked at Anan with a self-deprecating expression. I was never in any of your future plans. At that moment, I felt like a beggar on my knees, rather than a man asking your hand in marriage. I'm not. It's not. Are you still blaming me for not visiting Auntie? I was ready to go. I had presents ready. Anan anxiously looked for something to say. But in the end, you didn't visit even once. Xia Feng said. That's because you didn't come get me. How can I just go alone? How could I walk up to them without you? Anan helplessly explained. Then why didn't you ask me? Xia Feng couldn't help but point this out. I I Anan suddenly widened her eyes and grabbed Xia Feng's arm. You still care about me, don't you? No. Xia Feng stepped away from Anan and told her seriously, Anan, I'll tell you this, our problems already existed for a long time. In fact, if it weren't for my mother's illness, I don't think I would have ever proposed to you a third time. I don't believe you. Anan was so shocked, her eyes full of incredulity. I don't need you to believe, nor prove anything to you. Xia Feng felt tired. I don't even care about the ring. Then why do you want it back? Because I'm afraid that Yu Dong would see it. I don't want her to be sad. Remembering Yu Dong getting angry earlier because of the stake, Xia Feng couldn't imagine her reaction if she ever saw the ring. I'm not giving it back, this is mine. Anan shook her head and refused Xia Feng, as if the ring was the last thread holding them together. If you don't return it, I can't force you to give it back. Xia Feng took off his lab coat and headed to the door. It's late, I'm going home. Remember to lock the door when you leave. Xia Feng, you're really doing this to me? Anan tearfully looked at Xia Feng's retreating back. Anan dot we already broke up. Xia Feng turned and looked at her in the eye. Don't act like we still are, I'm not responding anymore. After saying this, Xia Feng left the lab, one determined step at a time. Anan looked at the empty doorway and couldn't help but fall to the ground, crying. Just one year. I came back in a year. I planned. Why didn't you wait for me? When Xia Feng left the lab, he knew that Anan must be crying inside. This made him uncomfortable. This was the first time he said such hurtful words to a woman. Xia Feng's expression remained somewhat dignified as he drove home. It stayed like this until he returned to his room and saw Yu Dong lying on the bed. Xia Feng approached and sat on the bed, gathering Yu Dong into his arms. Yu Dong was asleep, but when she smelled the familiar scent of disinfectant, she opened her eyes and found herself wrapped in Xia Feng's arms. Relieved, she couldn't help but rub his back, whispering, you're back. Did I wake you? Xia Feng said softly, shaking her head. Yu Dong's hands instinctively wrapped around Xia Feng's waist, bringing the pair closer together. I dot I just saw Anan in the lab. Xia Feng hesitated after saying this, he thought about what to say. Yu Dong's body stiffened, 
and her drowsiness flew away in an instant. She raised her head to look at Xia Feng and waited for him to speak. Xia Feng looked down into Yu Dong's eyes and sighed as he narrated what happened in the lab. So dot I couldn't get the diamond ring back, even though it already lost its significance. Xia Feng said as his fingers quietly played with Yu Dong's hair. Yu Dong stayed quiet throughout his story and didn't interrupt him once. When Xia Feng finished, she suddenly raised her right hand, the ring she was wearing displayed right in front of him. Her tone was somewhat resentful as she said, Why don't I get a diamond? Xia Feng smiled and replied, That ring was something she liked, this one is what I like. Xia Feng was being a little vague, but he knew that Yu Dong would understand. Then why didn't you ask me what I liked? Yu Dong understood Xia Feng's words, but she still asked, Don't you like me? Xia Feng pretended to be surprised. Dot Yu Dong found that Xia Feng's face was much thicker than before. Still, she readily admitted without a trace of embarrassment, Yes, I really like you. At this, Xia Feng couldn't help but bow down to kiss Yu Dong soundly. When she cried, Weren't you upset? Yu Dong couldn't help but ask this sad number. But I felt a little uncomfortable. Then you should go and comfort her. Yu Dong huffily broke away from Xia Feng's embrace. This man is really hateful, can't you just lie and coax me for once? Stop telling me the truth. Xia Feng looked at the back facing him, clearly saying that she doesn't want to talk to him anymore. Xia Feng smiled as he kissed Yu Dong's hair. I thought about it for a long time on the way back. When it comes to feelings, this Xia Feng's capacity is quite limited. With my ability, I only have room to protect one person dot and that person dot is in my arms. At this moment, Yu Dong thought that perhaps every man has the ability to sweet talk, to coax a woman to willingly sink into his arms. Yu dot you go take a shower. Yu Dong pushed Xia Feng away. Xia Feng looked at Yu Dong's red ears and knew she was shy, despite her seemingly prickly mood. Xia Feng felt that Yu Dong truly was a woman of contradiction. Sometimes. Her thoughts and actions didn't conform to her young age, but occasionally, she would act like a shy young girl. It made him deeply fascinated with her. But in the end, he reluctantly got up and entered the bathroom. Yu Dong waited to hear the shower turning on before rolling in the bed with her hands on her red cheeks. Under the dim lighting, she silently stroked the smooth platinum ring on her hand, the warmth in her eyes threatening to overflow. The author has something to say. Actually dot I think dot I'm being abusive dot I've been abusing all the female partners here, ah, I don't know why I feel so guilty, I dare not publicize my receipt, I don't want to write an in for a few days, ah dot I feel like I'm committing a crime dot dot slash o slash tilde. We finally understand Xia Feng's thoughts and why he acted like he did, while they were together for four years. Miscommunication and neglect hurt him a lot more than he showed. When he broke up with her, he was sad, but he was hurt for so long, to Xia Feng it probably felt like he was doing the inevitable. He tried to be accommodating, taking the initiative, but Anand didn't do the same. She didn't even bother visiting his mother. Anand probably thought he'd be fine waiting for her forever. After I read this, I imagined Xia Feng's heart quietly breaking after the second failed proposal and now I want to hug and protect our Shuo heroine. Yo, getting rejected is painful enough, imagine getting your marriage proposal rejected three times. I feel like Xia Feng became reckless and accepted Yu Dong's proposal so easily was because even before the third proposal, he just didn't feel the same way towards Anan as he did before. Chapter 48 Lipstick Follow-Up Ren Xinxin just gave birth to a child, and suddenly Mother Ren cares about her daughter's well-being. Every day she would be seen in the hospital, visiting her daughter and granddaughter. Yu Dong could see Ren Xinxin's reaction to this. The change of Mother Ren clearly made Xinxin very happy, a smile more prevalent in her expressions. Even with Lu Xiuan loitering around, her face wouldn't darken as much as before. However, Xiang Xiaoyu watched from the sidelines and privately analyzed the situation with Yu Dong. She didn't believe Mother Ren's sudden change in personality and visited the hospital daily. Yu Dong was also afraid of any further complications in Xinxin's health, so she took the time to go see her once a day, often having lunch with Xiaofeng. On this particular day, as Yu Dong entered the ward Xinxin's room was in, 
she saw Mother Ren walking towards the neonatal department. Yu Dong's image of Mother Ren had always been bad, and it only grew worse during their confrontation and Mother Ren's steadfast support towards Lu Xuan. Thinking of this, Yu Dong changed her destination and slowly followed her. Mother Ren walked all the way to her granddaughter's room and stood near the bed, teasing the baby and chatting with the nurse. It seemed that she really liked the child. Seeing this harmonious scene, Yu Dong suddenly felt that maybe Mother Ren actually had a heart. Miss Nurse, when she saw the nurse chatting with Mother Ren leave the room, Yu Dong stopped her with a smile. How is the baby in bed 12? Ah, your doctor Xia's lover. The little nurse exclaimed with bright eyes, Er dot you know me? Yu Dong was a little stunned. Of course, Dr. Xia was the golden bachelor in our hospital. When we heard he got married last year, many nurses could be heard crying for a long time. The little nurse laughed. Weren't you on that New Year's gala showing on the TV last year? We all saw, you sing very well. Thank you. Yu Dong was embarrassed when she heard this. Right, you asked about bed 12? Because Yu Dong was an acquaintance, the nurse was enthusiastic as she explained, the baby's still a little weak because she was born early, but after spending three days in the incubator, she's pretty much stabilized. If all's well in two days, she can be discharged. Speaking of, the grandmother just asked me about this too. The grandmother of the child asked when the baby can go home? Yu Dong asked doubtfully, maybe because she found her granddaughter to be too cute, she's been very eager, asking about this every day. The nurse laughed. Yu Dong nodded and thanked the nurse, because she had to change into scrubs to enter the ward. She was too lazy to change back immediately and stood around for a while. Looking through the glass to the babies in their bed rolling around, Yu Dong suddenly had the thought of her own future baby. Aren't they cute? As soon as Anan left her office, she saw Yu Dong nearby. Seeing approach her from the glass reflection, Yu Dong was also surprised. With a smile, she greeted Dr. An. Do you like children? Anan asked. Yes, they're adorable. Yu Dong nodded. I feel the same. That's why I chose pediatrics. Anan said with a smile. Before, Xie Feng always commented on my love for children, talking about how we'd have plenty. Anan suddenly cut herself off and it was as if she just realized she had broken up with Xie Feng, and that she was currently talking to his wife, purposely apologizing, she rushed to say, sorry, I, that's all right. After all, you two were lovers before, it's normal that you two discussed having children. Yu Dong laughed indifferently, but Xie Feng really does like children, we're actually planning to have one soon. Oh boy. Dot trying to get a rise out of me. Dot don't even think about it, sister, I'm on to you. Yu Dong's smile didn't waver, despite her hate towards Anan's childish behavior. Is that right? Anan's face froze, then she continued, then congratulations. I'm not pregnant yet, but we'll keep working hard. Yu Dong made a shy smile as if she was very embarrassed. Then. Dot I hope you achieve your goal. While Anan felt like she had been stabbed in the heart, she valiantly kept the smile on her face. Thank you. Doctor and you're very kind. Yu Dong pasted on an innocent face. Anan initially wanted to discuss kids between herself and Xie Feng, then lead the conversation to Xie Feng's feelings. But as a result, Yu Dong's impressive performance blocked her intentions. It seems that Yu Dong was doing this on purpose. Where did this naive young woman come from? Acting so sweet when she's obviously a scheming bitch. Anan's face remained smiling, acting as if she just remembered something. Oh, by the way, Xie Feng left something with me, I never had the chance to return it to him, but since you're here, I'll just pass it on to you. What thing? Yu Dong asked doubtfully. It's in my office. I'll go get it now, wait for me here. After saying this, Anan turned and went back into her office. Yu Dong looked at Anan's retreating. In her heart she thought, if you're planning on giving me the diamond ring, I'll happily accept it. Anan came back with a small bag, handing it to the curious Yu Dong. With a smile, she said. The last time we met in America, we happened to meet at a mall, and I accidentally took the lipstick he bought for you. At this, Yu Dong's eyes flickered. I'm giving it back to you now, after all, you were the original recipient. Yu Dong took the bag and opened to see two lipsticks inside. Chanel's 11 and 6 colors, 
I also like these colors. Anan laughed, I guess we have pretty similar tastes. Yu Dong took a deep breath and slowly raised her head to show a wide smile, we really do, otherwise, how could we fall in love with the same man? Anan's expression turned stiff, getting attacked so many times, how can she stand here and continue to take it? Cough. Well. I'm quite busy, I'm afraid I have to get going. Anan looked down at her watch, oh, then don't let me hold you back. Yudong smiled as she waved at Anan. After Anan left her field of vision, Yudong held the bag tightly, her knuckles turning hard and white. She wanted to find Xie Feng and ask him about this immediately. Your, your household has some things to settle with you Xie Feng, you better prepared. After muttering this harshly, she crumpled the bag in her hands as she left to go see Ren Xingxin. Xie Feng, just you wait till tonight. Dong Dong, you're here. Ren Xingxin was in bed when she greeted Yu Dong happily. How are you feeling today? Yu Dong sat on the chair next to the bed. Much better. The doctor said that they'll remove my stitches tomorrow. I'll be discharged in two days. Ren Xingxin smiled. That's good. Yu Dong picked up an apple and started to peel it as she continued. Did you want to go back to Xiaoyu's apartment? Or return to your house. I dot my mum told me to go home. Xingxin hesitated, then said, but I really don't want to see Lu Xuan. What do you want to do? Xingxin and Lu Xuan grew up together. In the end, Yu Dong didn't actually know the depth of Xingxin's feelings towards her childhood friend. She didn't know if Xingxin was willing to give Lu Xuan another chance. Actually, dot he came to visit a couple of times. Ren Xingxin said. He keeps apologizing to me. Yu Dong patiently waited for Ren Xingxin to state her true thoughts. But I don't really feel good whenever I see him. Ren Xingxin smiled bitterly, I don't want to see him. Yu Dong handed Ren Xingxin the freshly cut apple and said, No matter what your decision is, Xiaoyu and I will always be on your side. I know. Ren Xingxin was feeling emotional as she smiled. Having such great girlfriends in this lifetime truly is a blessing. Yu Dong spent some time with Ren Xingxin, then drove off. Yu Dong first went to Xiaoyu's studio to help, then headed for the radio station to restart the live broadcasts of Midnight Phantom. When she finally returned home, it was 2.30 am. Looking at the empty house, Yu Dong walked into the bedroom and directly threw Anan's bag onto Xia Feng's bed. She then headed for the second bedroom to sleep, firmly shutting the door closed. When Xia Feng returned home and saw his bed empty, his first thought was that Yu Dong wasn't home yet. However, he soon denied this, because he saw Yu Dong's coat and shoes at the entryway. Xia Feng thought for a moment, then approached the second bedroom, gently pushing the door open, sure enough. There was a sleeping figure on the bed. Xie Feng sighed helplessly. Yu Dong's habit of sleeping in the wrong room should be fixed immediately. Walking towards the bed, he planned to quietly carry the sleeping figure back to the master bedroom. But as soon as he lifted Yu Dong, she opened her eyes, seemingly alert. You're awake. Why didn't you sleep in the main bedroom? Xie Feng whispered, put me down. Yu Dong said coldly. Xie Feng was surprised. But he did as she said and placed Yu Dong back on the bed. Yu Dong went back underneath her blanket and turned her back towards Xie Feng to continue sleeping. What's wrong? Xie Feng wasn't a fool and could already tell that Yu Dong was making trouble. But after thinking about it for a moment, he was sure he didn't do anything to provoke her recently. Ah, I want a separation. Yu Dong said, her back still facing Xie Feng. Note separation as in living apart not divorce. I double checked. Don't joke about that. When Xie Feng heard the word separation and became extremely serious. Who's joking? Go back to your own room. I'm sleeping here. Sitting up, Yu Dong pointed at the door and yelled. What the hell is going on? Xie Feng knows that something must have happened because Yu Dong wasn't an unreasonable person. I'm going to sleep, you get out. Didn't this person see the lipstick on his bed? Still having the gall to actually ask me what happened. Yu Dong was so angry, she dragged her blanket above her head and wrapped herself like a caterpillar. Xie Feng tried to pull the blanket away and asking her what happened, but Yu Dong simply wouldn't budge. Although Xie Feng was utterly clueless, his intuition told him that he absolutely couldn't let Yu Dong stay mad the entire night. With Yu Dong refusing to communicate, 
Xie Feng had no other choice. He bent down and lifted the blanket burrito directly, taking the person wrapped inside to the main room despite her struggling in his arms. After being placed back down, Yu Dong struggled for a while to drill out of the blankets. When she finally emerged, she angrily shouted at Xie Feng, I want to separate. Dong Dong, don't joke. Xie Feng felt a headache coming on. Who's joking? Whether you believe me or not, I'm moving out tomorrow. Yu Dong huffed, hearing that Yu Dong planned to move out, how can Xie Feng bear it? Seeing Yu Dong moving to get off the bed, he suddenly loomed and pushed her back to the bed again. Let me go. What are you doing? Yu Dong struggled to push him off. Xie Feng's eyes darkened, and he lowered his head to directly block Yu Dong's chattering. Yu Dong struggled at first, but the kiss eventually paralyzed her entire body. Xie Feng's hateful tongue stirred her up making Yu Dong want to bite it, but in the end, she could only give up. When Xie Feng finally ended the kiss, he was met Yu Dong's flushed face and watery eyes. With a gentle look, he asked, Can you tell me what's going on now? Yu Dot you get up first. Yu Dong was shy as she tried to push Xie Feng away. Tell me first. When you've explained it clearly, I'll get up. Xie Feng countered, You. How did Yu Dong never notice how much of a scoundrel Xie Feng was? I won't try to run again, get up first. In the end, Xie Feng relaxed and sat up. Yu Dong followed, tidying her disheveled pajamas. She then turned to Xie Feng and asked angrily, Did you meet with Anan when you were in America? Anan? Xie Feng furrowed his brows but still nodded, I saw her twice, but we didn't interact much on either time. If there hadn't been much interaction, why did the lipstick you bought for me end up with her? Yu Dong retorted angrily, grabbing the bag of lipsticks on the corner of the bed and throwing it towards Xie Feng. Xie Feng wasn't angry when he caught the bag thrown towards him, just surprised. Opening the bag, he saw two lipsticks inside. After looking at them for a while, Xie Feng slowly recalled what Yu Dong was talking about. I didn't give these to her. I was choosing summer lipsticks for you in a mall and happened to meet Anan and her classmate. They were out shopping too, and when they saw the lipsticks, they thought I bought it for Anan and took it directly. Xie Feng explained. So what if she took it, why did you let her? Yu Dong furiously continued, and then you go and buy a completely different brand for me, you. Yu Dong wanted to continue scolding Xie Feng, but she didn't know what to say after all. Xie Feng's feelings for Anan must have been greater than his feelings for her back then. But Yu Dong's heart was caught by surprise and became fragile. Unexpectedly, tears suddenly flowed out. Don't cry. When Xie Feng saw her tears, his heart immediately panicked, and he tried to wipe away Yu Dong's tears. I was wrong, don't cry. Ah, Yu Dong felt particularly useless at this moment, crying over such a trivial thing. But for some reason, her tears just wouldn't stop. It's my fault for not taking it back, it's just that I didn't think you'd like Chanel lipstick, so I bought a different brand. Xie Feng explained. Who said I wouldn't like it, I love Chanel's lipsticks. Yu Dong sobbed out. Good, alright, you like it. Xie Feng nodded along to whatever Yu Dong was saying, it's just that you told me before that you don't like me thinking of you as Anan, so I thought you wouldn't like it if I bought you the brand Anan likes. If you like Chanel, I'll buy you every single color they have tomorrow. What do dot you mean? Yu Dong choked out. The list you gave me didn't indicate what brand you wanted. I don't really know much about those kinds of things, so when I entered the mall, I headed straight for the Chanel counter. When I met Anan, I realized that I would go to Chanel directly because I would often accompany Anan to their counter. Xie Feng said, Later, I thought you wouldn't like this, so I bought you another brand. That dot even so, you can't give it to her. After Yu Dong listened to Xie Feng's explanation, her heart felt relieved, but she was still a little angry. Even if you buy things I don't like, you can't give it to someone else. All right. I won't do it in the future. Xie Feng raised a hand, I promise. I hate Sunan. Yu Dong grumbled, all right. She deliberately tried to provoke me with that lipstick today, that scheming bitch. Uh, did she think I would misunderstand you, cause us to fight, then break up? No, I'm going to hold hands with you and be harmonious, just to infuriate her to death. A uh, dot okay, whatever you say, as long as you don't cry. 
everything you say goes. From now on I hate Chanel. I'm going to hate everything she likes. Yu Dong hesitated for a moment before saying, except you. Xie Feng finally couldn't hold his laughter in, how can his silly wife be so cute? Chapter 49 the Grays of Life. Xie Feng and Xiao Yifan surprisingly had no scheduled surgeries today. So when they finished their rounds, they managed to have dinner in the cafeteria on time for once. When Anan entered the canteen, she filled a tray with food, then approached the two figures sitting on a table by the window. Xiao Yifan had been busy drinking soup when he noticed Anan sitting down across from Xie Feng, causing him to immediately spray out a mouthful of soup. Why are you so disgusting? Anan passed him some napkins. Xiao Yifan glanced at Xie Feng as he coughed. Seeing that Xie Feng wasn't overtly shocked by An In's arrival, he simply bowed his head and focused on his food, not taking the initiative to say hello. Feeling that the atmosphere was getting awkward, Xiao Yifan tried to find a topic to talk about. Cough. Right, Anan, I remember that Dr. Lane is staying here for a month. Are you going back to America afterward? Or are you staying? Dr. Dot Lane was Anand's mentor in America. City Hospital recently invited Dr. Lane to come and teach, so Anand followed him here as his student. I'm going back to America first, after all, I still have two months before I finish my studies. While saying this, Anand sneaked a peek at Xie Feng. What about after you graduate? Are you going back to your children's hospital, or are you going to work here at City Hospital? Xiao Yifan asked, I was invited by both hospitals, but I'm still undecided. Anan saw still glancing at Xie Feng. Xie Feng finished his food, put down his chopsticks, and took a napkin to wipe his mouth. Looking towards Anan, he asked her, Anan, did you look for Yu Dong yesterday? Xiao Yifan froze, his eyes turning to Xie Feng. When Anan passed the lipsticks to Yu Dong, she knew that Xie Feng would definitely find out. It seems that she troubled Yu Dong yesterday. Anan felt smug at this, but her face remained neutral as she replied, Yes, I was really embarrassed that I took the lipstick you bought for Yu Dong, so I brought it back with me from America. I happened to meet her yesterday in the pediatrics ward, so I took the chance and gave them back to her. Thank you. Xie Feng said, You're welcome. But our relationship's now a little awkward. So if there's anything else you think of in the future, you don't need to bother sending it back. Xie Feng said with a smile. Anan's expression stiffened when she heard this, looking at Xie Feng incredulously. Xiao Yifan was also surprised by Xie Feng's attitude. This gentleman rarely spoke to women so directly, let alone towards Anan. How can I do that? Those lipsticks were expensive. Anan said, It doesn't matter, it's not like my salary is low. I can comfortably shower you dong with gifts. After Xie Feng said this, he stood up, I'm done eating, so I'll go ahead first. Without waiting for a reply, Xie Feng walked out of the canteen. Xiao Yifan glanced towards Anan, only to find her looking sullen, the chopsticks on her hand broken. I'm done too. You take your time and eat slowly. Xiao Yifan resolutely escaped leaving Anan to smack her broken chopsticks down in the table. Xiao Yifan managed to catch up to Xie Feng and was shocked as he asked, What happened yesterday? Xie Feng pushed their office door open and replied, Try to gossip less. No, no, you have to tell me, that seriously scared me. You actually didn't give someone face and it's Anan, and more importantly, you did it in front of me. Xiao Yifan said, so you're not going to be smart and instead you're putting yourself in the middle of things? Xie Feng tilted his head, looking at Xiao Yifan with a raised eyebrow. I. Xiao Yifan pointed to himself and exclaimed it's not my fault things ended up awkward. Who decided to be completely different from his usual personality and start something? I know you're good friends with Anan, but we're over. The one I like is Yu Dong. Anan making trouble again won't help anyone. Xie Feng said, I thought about it seriously last night, and I figured I should just make things clear as soon as possible. Dot Xiao Yifan was dumbfounded. If you really want to help, you should try to persuade her to stop. Xie Feng said as he picked up his stethoscope. And do you really believe that she likes me that much? Doesn't she? Xiao Yifan countered, she's just not comfortable with the face I gave up on her first. After Xie Feng said this, he patted Xiao Yifan on the shoulder then went out. In the end, 
when you have something to compare it to, it's easy to clearly see just how much a person likes you. Xiao Yifan stood in the empty office for a while before swearing, those three farts, why do I try to help those goddamn thankless people, I should just shut my mouth. Yu Dong naturally didn't know that Xiafeng said these words to Anan, and she was much too busy to care. The dubbing work pushed aside slowly started. Coupled with Rin Xingxin's hospitalization, Yu Dong and Xiangxi Oyu were both working overtime. Added with the fact that they visited Xingxin every day, and the fact that Yu Dong also had to prepare for her nightly live broadcasts, they were both stretched thin these days. In actual fact, Last year's profits from Xioyu Studios was pretty good. Xioyu was also generous, giving her two girlfriends bountiful salaries. Yu Dong could actually just quit her radio station job and work with Xioyu full time, in face Xioyu mentioned this several times, but Yu Dong always refused. Because she likes the job. Through the traveling sound waves, Yu Dong knew her voice would accompany many lonely people through the night. Hello everyone. This is FM 9666. You're now listening to Midnight Phantom after the advertisement. This is DJ Fish Jelly. Yu Dong smiled as she talked because while the listeners might not see it, she knew they could hear it in her voice. It's time to open our hotline again. Let's answer out first call. After a beep, the phone connected. Hello, this is Fish Jelly. Yu Dong said with a smile. Hello, Fish. I'm Miss Beautiful. A soft female voice could be heard from the other end of the phone. It sounded very pleasing, and all the listeners could feel her gentleness towards the host. So what story does this Miss Beautiful want to share with us tonight? Fish Jelly asked. I, the tender voice, after much hesitation, timidly asked, Can you promise not to look down on me if I say, uh? Fish Jelly blinked doubtfully, thinking that it shouldn't be too bad. Fish Jelly continued. Do you know those confession booths in Christian churches? You can think of me as your priest. Tell me your story tonight and maybe your heart will feel lighter. Like in those American blockbusters? Miss Beautiful asked. Yes. Miss Beautiful finally started to narrate her story. Actually. I apostrophe M. Maybe I should just be called a mistress or a second wife. Fish Jelly froze at her words. She thought of a lot of possibilities. But never in her wildest dreams did she consider this scenario. As a woman, Fish Jelly hated mistresses, but she didn't interrupt Miss Beautiful's narrative. I met my lover's wife when I was out shopping. At that time, I was holding her husband's card and was buying clothes. She didn't know me but was very friendly. I saw a beautiful custom dress in the shop, but because my membership level wasn't high enough, the clerk refused to sell the dress to me. She saw this and offered to let me borrow her membership card. I was a little embarrassed, but she was kind and smiled at me, saying that I was beautiful and that the dress would look good on me. Perhaps because the hardest thing to say was already said, Miss Beautiful continued to talk more confidently, I knew about her the day I became his mistress. I knew she existed but I never felt guilty because I didn't want to take her place. I was content to be a mistress nobody knew about. Because of this, my lover is also satisfied and was very generous. But after that day, I don't know why, I started to think about why I became a mistress in the first place. I'm educated, beautiful and young. I can find a good job and support myself. But I ended up becoming a mistress. Miss Beauty lamented. When I graduated from university, I got a job as a clerk with a salary of less than 3,000 yuan a month. People around me were living on a budget and I recall thinking about how much money I needed to buy a house. But the first time I met him, he directly gave me an apartment. For something people needed to work 30 years for, I just needed to nod and I have it. Miss Beauty sighed, so why don't I just take this job I thought. He gives me 100,000 yen a month and occasionally sends me expensive bags and cars. Maybe in two or three years, I'll be disliked. But I already have enough savings that most people can only dream of. Miss Beauty continued, by then, if I wanted to start a family, I could sell the house, go someplace no one knew me, find a man my age, fall in love, get married, and we would have a perfectly good life. Some people say that being a mistress is shameful and immoral. I agreed with them in the beginning. I was embarrassed to go out. It took a long time for me to get over it, 
to talk about a relationship that will never amount to anything. I won't destroy his family, his wife will never know and will remain happy. I'm already planning on leaving him when I get the chance. After this, Miss Beautiful trailed into silence. Fish Jelly ignored the scolding and swearing scrolling through her computer. After a moment of hesitation, she asked, then why call? Actually dot I don't even know dot maybe I just wanted someone to talk to. Miss Beautiful added, you don't have to comment, I'll just hang up. Did you ever have someone you really liked? Fish Jelly asked, I. Miss Beautiful was silent for a while before she said, I don't think I'll ever love anyone in the future. Having experienced something like this, I don't think I'll be able to like someone wholeheartedly. But, I think my love likes me, and I think I like him too. You called because you aren't happy. Yu Dong said, certain. Because despite becoming rich, getting a car and house that ordinary people struggle for, you can never have their happiness. You feel lonely, empty because you don't have the love of someone. I can start looking for it now. I have the foundations. Miss Beautiful said. When you really start looking for it someday, all of this will turn into pain and suffering. Fish Jelly said, in the event that you don't find that someone, you'll be left with nothing but the pain. Beep. M apostrophe S dot beautiful didn't answer and directly hung up the phone. Fish Jelly didn't say anything either her computer had nothing but swear words. Tonight's phone call made Fish Jelly a little uncomfortable, which isn't too bad when you look at her radio history so far. There wasn't any law to convict her with, it was only a case of having different morals. Her monetary gains would probably impress young and immature listeners. Yu Dong felt an unprecedented distress and wanted to say something to remedy the situation, but she couldn't find the right words to say. I don't have the right to judge whether your actions are right or wrong, but I sympathize with you because you've already regarded yourself as some merchandise. This phone conversation really did make Yu Dong somewhat uncomfortable. She thought that the big bosses in Taiwan wouldn't like the fact that she let such people finish their story on air. Yu Dong couldn't figure out why some people would sell themselves for money and treat themselves like random items for sale. When you one day make enough money and desire to return to an ordinary quiet life, could they really feel at ease? Coming out of the bathroom, Xia Feng noticed that Yu Dong was still sitting on the bed, dazed. Lifting the blanket, he gathered her into his arms and said, don't think about it anymore, go to sleep, I just can't figure it out. She said that when she earned enough money she would go to another city, find a suitable partner and live a happy life. Wouldn't that be kind of mocking most ordinary, diligent workers? Her perspective of things has already changed, she's become pitiful. Xia Feng said, even if she finds someone she really likes in the future, when she has a family and children. Her previous experiences will follow her and cause her to be paranoid. If money can actually bring happiness, that wouldn't be as depressing as it is. My heart's just a little uncomfortable. Yu Dong said, looking up. Xia Feng smiled and bent down to kiss Yu Dong's rosy lips. Yu Dong blinked. Is that better? Xia Feng asked. A little bit. Yu Dong said. Xia Feng turned and placed Yu Dong directly underneath him, gently. He opened her mouth with his own and gradually depriving Yu Dong of oxygen. The atmosphere turned ambiguous as a layer of fog clouded Yu Dong's mind. She felt Xia Feng slowly slide a hand inside her pajamas, making her shy. Even better now? Xia Feng bit Yu Dong's earlobe. You lustful wolf. Yu Dong complained. Ha ha. Xia Feng's hands had already unbuttoned her pajamas under the blanket and the two inched closer. This primitive act of affection is also the most passionate expression of the soul. Perhaps in today's society, sex has become more and more open. But Yu Dong still feels that while it would bring joy in the surface, casual sex would never touch the soul. It can be crude, and dirty, and obscene, but it can also be beautiful. Chapter 50 In the Name of Love The weather was getting warmer. Trees throughout the streets were gradually sprouting green shoots the colorful scenery improving the mood of the various passerby. Yu Dong drove along the green streets, opening a window that lets the spring breeze in. Today Ren Xingxin was getting discharged. Because of her late broadcasts, they decided to pick her up late in the morning. Xiang Xiaoyu told Yu Dong to just drive to her apartment instead and wait for her to bring the mother-daughter pair home. By the way, after a few days of serious thought, 
Ren Xingxin decided to take her child and live away from her home for the time being. As she was nearing the apartment, Xiang Xiaoyu suddenly called. Yu Dong figured she was just reporting that they were about to leave the hospital. I'm ten minutes away, Yu Dong Dong, come to the hospital right now, that scummy man is trying to steal the child. Before Yu Dong even finished her sentence, Xiaoyu cut her off with a roar. Yu Dong slammed on the brakes and parked on the roadside. I'll be right there. Don't let them take the child out of the hospital. Yu Dong said, right. Because it was currently in the middle of the workday, there weren't many cars out on the road. Disregarding a few traffic laws, Yu Dong turned her steering wheel and made an abrupt U-turn, heading straight to the hospital. City hospital, neonatal department, in a certain ward. Mom, give me my baby. Ren Xingxin pleaded her mother, come home with me. Mother Ren countered, mom. Ren Xingxin glanced at Lu Xuan and Mother Lu nearby. She wasn't foolish. She knew what they wanted her to do, but she couldn't make herself go back home. Auntie, are you just going to ignore Xingxin's wishes and directly gift wrap your daughter and granddaughter to that Lu Xuan? Xiaoyu unceremoniously attacked Mother Ren. How can a woman talk like this? This child is Lu Xuan's and there's nothing wrong with keeping the family together. Mother Ren had long been fed up with Xiaoyu's aggressive speaking, so she replied unkindly, You're just an outsider trying to destroy other people's families, what kind of heartless person are you? When Xiang Xiaoyu heard this, she was so angry she chocked, Xing Xin, come home with Auntie Yun, I'll help you and Lu Xuan arrange another wedding. Lu Xuan's mother also advised, Auntie Yun, I know you've been very kind to me. Xingxin looked at Lu Xuan's mother. She had grown up with this aunt taking care of her. In fact, there were plenty of times Auntie Yun felt like her actual mother. Her childhood was spent with Lu Xuan and the ever tender Auntie Yun, making her treat this auntie with respect. If you want to see the baby, you're welcome to visit anytime. But having a relationship with Lu Xuan is no longer possible. Ren Xingxin. Hearing Xingxin say this, Lu Xuan's face turned pale and he couldn't help but yell. Why are you yelling? Xiaoyu scolded. Shut up. Auntie Yun knew her son well, he prioritized saving his reputation more than anything. She regretted letting him act like this so much that she wanted to cough up blood, but she couldn't help but try to persuade Xingxin. Xingxin, you can be rest assured, I'll watch him like a hawk, Lu Xuan wouldn't dare bully you any longer. Aunt Yun, I never wanted to marry him. Ren Xingxin shook her head as she cried out. Lu Xuan's heart suddenly thumped in fright, what does Ren Xingxin mean by these words? Hadn't she always wanted to marry him? If it weren't for the sudden pregnancy and subsequent birth causing her to change, wouldn't they be married already? Mother Ren always visited their home to make peace. Slap. Mother Ren had passed the baby to Mother Yun, then to the crowd's shock, she gave Ren Xingxin a hard slap. What are you doing? Seeing Ren Xingxin's red cheek, Xiaoyu wanted to beat up this old lady. Lu Xuan and Aunt Yun were also shocked by Mother Ren's actions. Ren Xingxin, what on earth are you planning on doing? Mother Ren's eyes turned red as she scolded. You're just a young girl who recently graduated. You even got pregnant before marriage. Do you even understand how people will see you as Lang Xuan is willing to take responsibility? Where can you be dissatisfied? What's the point of this petty rebellion? Then why did you blame Xingxin for the pregnancy? Shouldn't you be blaming him? He's the one that made your own daughter pregnant. Xiaoyu pointed at Lu Xuan and shouted, how can such a mother exist? Ren Xingxin covered her face and bowed her head. When she pulled the seething Xiaoyu towards her, her face was unexpectedly calm, but her eyes were filled with tears. Mom I've grown so big already and I've been listening to you all this time, but I'm really tired now. Ren Xingxin took a deep breath, I really don't know how to continue being your daughter. Marry Lu Xuan. Mother Ren said, Mom, why did you even take me with you when you divorced Dad? Ren Xingxin couldn't help but ask, I. Mother Ren closed her eyes, and in a moment of softness said, You listen to me. You have to be good and live with Lu Xuan so that your child can have a complete home. Mom won't cause any more trouble after. I can raise my child on my own. Ren Xingxin said, What do you know? 
Do you know how hard it is to be a single mother? Mother Ren couldn't help but shout, I know. Ren Xinxin looked at her mother and said, I know because I grew up with one dot but I'm not going to micromanage her life as much as you've managed mine. Mother Ren didn't expect her weak daughter to suddenly be so tough. For a while, she couldn't think of anything to say, Xinxin. Aunt Yun heard what Xinxin said and also felt a bit bad. Aunt Yun, give me back my baby, and come visit her when she's a bit older. Ren Xinxin turned towards Aunt Yun. Aunt Yun looked down at the child in her arms then towards Ren Xinxin, reluctance plain to see in her expression. This child is mine too. Lu Xuan suddenly said, I'm the father of the child and I have custody. You. Ren Xinxin looked at Lu Xuan incredulously. Ren Xinxin, I don't care what you think, I'll never let my daughter be fatherless. Lu Xuan looked at Ren Xinxin and said, now you have two choices, either you give me my child or we get married. I promise to take care of you. Yu Dong whose hand was on top of the doorknob heard Lu Xuan's words. Yu Dong's expression immediately turned fierce and she slammed the door open, rushing towards Xiaoyu. What nonsense are you letting them spout? Xiaoyu just directly called the police. Dong Dong. Xinxin was surprised to see Yu Dong. When Lu Xuan saw Yu Dong, his brows instantly wrinkled. Compared to Xiaoyu's spitting venom, he found dealing with Yu Dong to be a lot more difficult. Mr. Dot Lu A, I'll give you two choices. Yu Dong extended two fingers. One, you return Xinxin's baby right now. Two, we call the police and say someone's trying to steal a child. This is also my child. Lu Xuan's anger soared, all right. Yu Dong sneered, I'll give you a third choice. I'll go find a reporter and explain the situation in great detail. Then, I'll find a lawyer to file a lawsuit and slowly drag it for as long as possible. Let's see which drops first, the lawsuit or the group's stock price. Lu Xuan glared at Yu Dong. But she looked back with equal intensity. Yu Dong didn't have much patience and seeing that Lu Xuan wasn't saying anything, she motioned towards Xiang Xiaoyu, call it in. Yes. Xiaoyu grabbed her phone and dialed 110. Wait. Mother Yun stopped Xiaoyu, if they all ended up at a police station, what would happen to her household? The situation was becoming more and more chaotic. Aunt Yun slowly approached Ren Xinxin and carefully returned the baby to its mother, saying, Aunt Yun didn't come here to steal a child from a mother. Auntie Yun just hopes that you can give Lu Xuan another chance. Ren Xinxin took her lost baby and couldn't help but shed tears. Carefully kissing the little child's forehead, Xinxin raised her head and said, Thank you, Mom. Seeing this, Lu Xuan couldn't help but call out, What? Do you really want to go to the police station? Aunt Yun scolded, Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Although Lu Xuan was a domineering man on the outside, he dared no talk back to his mother. Let's go. Aunt Yun could see that it was impossible for her silly son to get back with Xinxin. Disappointed, she turned and left the room. Lu Xuan was stunned. He looked towards Ren Xinxin and the child in her arms. Seeing Xinxin on her guard, his heart became too upset. In the end, he didn't say anything as he followed his mother out. After the mother and son left, Ren Xinxin let out a huge sigh of relief. She then looked towards her dazed mother who let out a short scream. Mother Ren felt like she had been hit in the head. Looking at her daughter, she said, fine, go fend for yourself. Mother Ren turned around, and as if she suddenly grew several years older, she staggered out the door. Mom. Ren Xinxin couldn't help but cry out. When they left, the room calmed down and Xiaoyu patted her chest in relief, I thought I really needed to call the police. That's what you got out of all that? Yu Dong turned towards Ren Xinxin and said, let's go home. Ren Xinxin nodded as she gently gathered her child closer to her arms. As the trio walked out of the room, they saw Xia Feng standing outside. Are you alright? Xia Feng asked, he had been worried. Yes, thank you. Ren Xinxin replied. On the way to the hospital, Yu Dong actually called Xia Feng and told him about Mother Ren wanting to take the child away. Xia Feng had called the hospital security and was ready to stop and talk with her. That's good. Xia Feng turned to Yu Dong with a smile and brushed her wind swept hair. I have another operation later, so go ahead first. Un. 
Yu Dong nodded, Xia Feng said his goodbyes to the girls then walked away. The three girls, plus a baby, finally managed to return to their apartment peacefully. The apartment Xiaoyu rented was quite good. It had good noise insulation, was spacious, and had two rooms. Because Ren Xinxin had her baby, Xiaoyu took the initiative and moved into the second bedroom so that Xinxin could have the bigger master bedroom. Ren Xinxin fed her daughter, then placed the little fellow in her crib to sleep before coming out of the bedroom. The two girls outside had already set the table. Looking at Xinxin, Yu Dong smiled. You took a while, but you've got good timing. The chicken soup was steaming hot but now it's alright to eat. Yu Dong went out to a restaurant and bought some food before coming to the apartment. Ren Xinxin smiled as she accepted the bowl from her friend, her heart warm. Don't come to work this month, just sit at home and take care of your baby properly. Xiang Xiaoyu said as she ate, if you have anything you need, just tell me and I'll bring it back in the evening. Xiaoyu is right. I booked a month's worth of soup delivery from this restaurant. Other than chicken soup they have fish soup, pig's trotter soup. If you get tired of soup just tell them and get it changed. Yu Dong also added. Yeah? Ren Xinxin wanted to laugh, but for some reason, her vision was getting blurry. Don't cry, I read that a mother's tears are the child's milk car, don't starve my daughter. Xiang Xiaoyu saw Xinxin tearing up and hurriedly said. The remark made Xinxin laugh instantly. Where the hell did you read that? Yu Dong was dumbfounded. I do, ah. Xiaoyu answered, gee we're all inexperienced. I'll have to ask my mother the next time I visit home. Speaking of mothers, I wonder how mine is doing. Ren Xinxin suddenly said, she's. Xiang Xiaoyu was trying to say that Mother N wasn't a mother at all when Yu Dong interrupted her with a well-placed elbow. She wasn't like this before. Ren Xinxin explained to her two close friends, I remember when she got divorced I could have gone with my father, but she was afraid that I would get bullied by my stepmother so she took me away. Back then, life was hard for a recently divorced mother. Ren Xinxin recalled, my mother was actually quite beautiful and competent when she was young. Even after her divorce men pursued her, but she always refused. She eventually married stepfather because he was good to me, but they aren't doing so well recently, Xinxin. When Xiang Xiaoyu saw that she was getting sad, Xiaoyu wanted to comfort her friend. It's alright, I've never stopped believing in my mother's love for me. She'll come around eventually. Ren Xinxin laughed, but before that, I have to provide a good life for me and my daughter first. That's right. Yu Dong nodded, I'll apologize to auntie later too. Xiang Xiaoyu remembered her impolite and callous attitude towards mother Rin today. Truthfully, Xiaoyu doesn't believe that there are any mothers out there that don't love their child, it's just that they might not necessarily know what's best for them. Yu Dong also thought of her mother. Her mother had once been stubborn, believing that marrying her daughter off was the best possible outcome for Yu Dong. Often these kinds of actions done in the name of love are the most distressing and frustrating. One can only hope that this same love can also bear fruit respect and communication. But mom. Know that we'll always love you no matter what, the author has something to say. Xinxin and Luxuan are completely over. Xinxin will have a better and brighter future from now on. Although Mother Ren's actions are annoying, I think that in her heart, she still loves Xinxin and hopes that her daughter will live the ideal life she never got. Peace, Mother's Day is coming. The last sentence is for my mother.